So the question is, 23% of parents think their child has an extraordinary talent. An extraordinary talent. I don't know, what is an extraordinary talent? Well, I like, I, you know, they think they're a fabulous singer, fabulous dancer, just an, a talented. Two of my kids can fly. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one can't. The other one, it turns out. Yeah. That so went I badly. don't let the other two fly. I say, you're, you're just upset the other one. <laughs> whatever, whatever its name is. <laughs> <laughs> He's out there and I go, go, fly. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming back in. <laughs> so, yes, if you call that extraordinary, then, yeah, guilty as charged. <laughs> Jodie, what, what do you think? I, don't, I think so. I think, you know, all parents love and adore their children. My, mine are only five months old, so they don't really... One time I went to change a nappy and she sneezed and shit everywhere. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, it was amazing. I went, oh, that was extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember what my other kid can do. The other one, the one who can't fly, though, can do something quite extraordinary. <laughs> what can he do, he Sean? Can, you know, he can walk on one hand, like that, on his fingers, like in cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell him, don't do that when the other two are in. <laughs> but that's it. Can't read or write, either of them. <laughs> 23% of parents think their child has an extraordinary talent, so you're going to go for true or false? Sean? True, yeah, let's go true. true. Yeah, yeah. true. Okay, you're going true. What are you going to go for? What do you I think false. 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 Yeah, we'll go false. Then. False. You'll go false. Why I not? can tell you the answer is false. Oh. In fact, 42% of parents think their child has an extraordinary talent. I'll tell you who I think was a talented child. Do you remember little Michael Jackson from the Jackson 5? <laughs> he was incredible, wasn't he? What have happened to him? <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Did he? And then <coughs> 40 million albums. And then he, he did what? <laughs> yeah, everyone likes children. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> but I could go and see him live? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I better just kick on then. <laughs> Over to Jason's team. What do you like the look of? Theatre. Let's go with the theatre. Of course. Our first love. Okay. 51% of theatre-goers say what has ruined their theatre experience? Other uh, oh. the people. Other people, the, other, the rest of the audience. Yeah, I was doing a show once, and I'd, I'd literally just started, and I was doing, doing my bit, and this woman came down the aisle and go, Michael, I can't find my seat. <laughs> my son's in it, and I can't find him anywhere, and I'm trying to carry on. Excuse me, I can't, I don't know where I'm sitting, it's too dark. And I had to stop. <laughs> and up goes the light, and the bloke who's obviously with his mum is going, Dear oh, God! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's off he goes, put her in the seat, and then we had to carry on. I went to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and um, we took, like, took the whole family, we all went along, and my little brother's ten, and he's just at that age where he thinks it's, like, sort of real. And there's the point where Snow White gets given that poison apple, and she goes, Should I eat the apple? And everyone's going, No, don't do it. And he's... My brother's on his feet, he's going, No! Don't do it! Don't do it, it's poison! Don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> and she eats it and collapses, and he went... I bloody told her! <laughs> <laughs> mobile phones? So, ah, yeah. mobile, mobile phones. phones. Yeah. That is the right answer. Oh, we're not right, yeah. <laughs> Yes, 51% of theatre-goers say that a mobile phone has ruined their theatre experience. The worst thing about phones going off in the theatre is you end up with the actors breaking out of character, pointing and shouting, and everyone in the audience hissing and muttering. In the end, I could hardly hear what my mate was trying to say, even on loudspeaker. <laughs> Best way to discourage burglars. What I do, I put a nude picture of me in the window. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from behind, so I'm looking over my shoulder like that, going... <laughs> He just says, come in. <laughs> Parmaham. I just put Parmaham out, cos people are easily distracted. You come in thinking, right, I want a DVD. Hey, up, there's some ham there. <laughs> <laughs> you could lace the Parmaham or something. <laughs> Bit of mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of burglars are junkies, aren't they? <clears throat> So what I think would be a good thing to do is, is fill your, your front garden full of gnomes dressed as policemen. <laughs> <laughs> they go, whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a bit freaky. I'm not going <laughs> OK, best way to discourage burglars. A dog. 
That's John. a crazy answer. Yeah. <laughs> John, that's mental. Uh, uh, beware of the dog sign is number nine on our list. That only works for cat burglars, though. <laughs> oh, no, we've had a call in from the two Ronnies, they want it back. <laughs> what do you mean, the best way to do it? a burglar alarm? No, that's, that's number four. Alan Cochran? Is it a moat? <laughs> <laughs> Is number one a moat? The best way to discourage burglars is a moat. I don't know if you can say moat properly. <laughs> I, I'm guessing that you're trying to say moat. But you're saying moat. <laughs> like, like a goldfish that's got learning difficulties. <laughs> Shall I say it like you say it? Yeah. All right. Moat. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's meant to fool the burglars. Lights on. It's yeah, lights on. I was about to say. Lights, lights on, on, of course. Lights on the, house. Yeah. <laughs> the best way to discourage burglars is leaving the lights on. If you've broken into a house and you're watching this because they've left the telly on, why don't you do a poo in the living room? <laughs> okay. Scariest fairy tale character. The scariest thing that I remember as a kid is a child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm. Yeah. That is in yeah. there, I think. Everyone. Played by Madonna, it? wasn't it? Madonna, that. Lots yeah. of people say <laughs> 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 worst first roles. Is it Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> <laughs> I remember my dad used to read that to me every night. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and he ate his liver with some fab beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I tell you what, the other one I ate, Jill from Jack and Jill. She was a f clumsy, <laughs> wasn't she? <laughs> He's fallen down the hill, right? And then she's made the exact same mistake, falling down, landing on her, and then he's broken his crown and she's gone, I know what fixed that, a bit of brown paper and vinegar. vinegar. You're like, <laughs> Germaline, you daft sod, Germaline! <laughs> okay, I'll give you a clue. Think uh, gingerbread house. The witch the from Ansel and Gretel. It's oh, the witch with the oven and all of, of that going on. It's, it's the right answer. Yeah. Yes, the scariest fairy tale character is the witch in Hansel and Gretel. In the original fairy tale, the witch who eats children represents acute postnatal depression, and the gingerbread house represents cravings during pregnancy. Hansel is the male generative force, the sperm, the son of the wood chopper or penis. Gretel is the egg. The enchanted forest is pubic hair. The warts on the witch's face are an STD. Cinderella is a the gingerbread man is gay. The beanstalk is a giant cock. Little Red Riding Hood is the clitoris, and Goldilocks. Animals. Any questions? <laughs>